Yes, I am late to the party because GNOME 45 released some days ago and the betas were available just a few days ago. So yes, I'm late to the party, but I was in vacation, I'm back now, and I just wanted to try out GNOME 45 to see how it works because, listen to me, I was super surprised when I saw the announcement because I was following GNOME 45 development for quite a while and instead what I got was much more than I actually knew was coming. So I didn't pre prepare myself well enough. Let's actually see what's new. So firstly, the obvious thing which was teased at Guadac, we knew this was coming, but still we have to talk about it and it's the top left indicator for activities, which is super beautiful, objectively. So I actually really like it. I've heard criticism of it as well, but before I jump into anything like that, I would still like to, you know, actually try it to see uh, how it behaves when multiple desktops are open. Now, as you might notice whilst I'm doing this, the speed of this whole thing isn't great because I had multiple technical issues while trying to just open this place while trying to actually boot up GNOME 45. As an example, the only distro that I thought of was GNOME OS, obviously, but boxes, boxes, GNOME boxes is broken on my system, so I just couldn't try that out. And why was GNOME boxes broken? I don't know, because GNOME boxes does not tell you anything about what's going wrong. You have to use a command line tool dot uh, dash dash check, but whatever. Now, as soon as I actually get something open here, which is, I I'm trying, I'm trying, we, we can actually see how the indicators work. I've heard criticism of them as well, uh, especially because if you're a new user out of the box, you might rightfully, might rightfully ask, you know, how does how do they work? Like, what's what's those weird dots on the top left? How do you actually tell the user what they do if you click on them? Because you do have to click on them to pretty much do anything. So, how? Previously, you actually had a label, which was activities, and that actually expresses a bit better what happens, what is going on. That, I think, is a nice approach. But uh, GNOME developers actually did uh, some sort of uh, study or research, uh, I don't remember, and they found out that this label wasn't working. Uh, so they tried, tried out different alternatives, and that's what I appreciate of the development uh, process, actually trying out different things. And they saw that apparently these dots work quite well. So I'm just going to give it to them. And personally, I really like them. I know that you have to click on them to get to the overview. So whatever, I guess, I'm into them. Now, I'm absolutely failing at <laughs> dragging this window to a new desktop. Come on, come on, come on. Do it. Oh, I did it. So now I can switch to the second desktop and to the third desktop. or not, because uh, yes, the desktops actually disappear when you push stuff into a new one. So forget about that. Forget about all I've been trying to do. Let me just say that, yes, switching between desktops, I do quite like how the peels in the top left look. Uh, they probably also have a super beautiful <laughs> animation, but uh, yeah, the, I'm not getting any animation out of this image. So uh, second up, uh, Another thing that absolutely shocked me. Let's get back to uh, this application. And when I first saw this image in the announcement, I thought, okay, weird. They are showcasing a third party theme uh, into their official announcement. Because I thought, this has to be a third party theme, right? Well, it isn't. Uh, this is how GNOME applications look from now on, which is, wow, <laughs> like, <laughs> firstly, this is beautiful, objectively, this is beautiful. Now, I'm a KDE developer, which means I have to co 
complain about something here. I guess that's my role. And if I do have to complain about something, I will complain about the fact that there's no way to, uh, there's nothing that separates the header bar, which is where you can actually drag and drop your window and the actual content of the application. So that from a usability point of view is a bit of an issue. Let's be honest not being able to know where to drag and drop from. You just have to kind of highball it. But sure, sure, it's not that big of an issue. Come on, let me open more applications. I'm trying, okay. Now, I actually don't know which other applications use this design. I just saw this image in the announcement and the third, wow, beautiful. But does anything else use these kind of things? Let's, let's open contacts, which usually is a very little and easy to port to new design applications. So I use these little applications to actually check the consistency uh, of the this kind of new design changes. But what I've seen from, again, the announcement is that this sidebar is actually a libadwaita component. And what I've seen is that a lot of things were ported from other Kind of components, I don't remember exactly what, to Libadwaita components, which is very nice in terms of consistency. Because from now on, whatever change you actually make, yes, just use this local address book, whatever change you make to the uh, sidebar, which you can directly make to the Libadwaita uh, component, is going to actually reflect to all applications that use that component. Now, unless this crashes, which it might, I should be able to click this done button here at the top and see what happens. Do you have a header bar? So for applications that do not have sidebars, like this welcome screen that you, we just saw, I did notice that the header bar, the actual header bar, oh yes, it does. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> this is happy me. Okay, so, but as, as I was saying, for applications that do not have a sidebar, because let's be honest, not everything can have a sidebar, then we have lost officially the header bar. Like previously, view and header, title bar, whatever, were disconnected visually. Now they're all blended together, which I think was actually the odd look I don't know if it's the old look of GNOME, but it's surely the old look of Kiri. So uh, it, the design works really well when there's a sidebar, like it's beautiful. Sidebars, beautiful. Without a sidebar, not as beautiful, but if, you're, if you actually manage to have everything consistent, then you know what, I'm just in. Uh, I see a comment saying, are you shaming GNOME right now? No, I'm not, come on. I've said anything but positive stuff. No, uh, the opposite. I've not said anything except positive stuff. So what else do they have? So another major feature that they ad advertised in the announcement is fast search. Now, interestingly enough, this fast search isn't about the search itself, but it's about the search results given from applications. So I could be, I should be able to search things very fast. Now, what I'm going to attempt is to actually do a search on this system, which as you noticed, isn't fast. And I'm going to try to do um, math stuff. I'm going to do one plus one. Let's do it now. And let's see actually how much time that takes to actually show two, which is the correct result or, you know, the mathematician's lobby. And that's what they tell us. Uh, I did not manage to write two because obviously the <laughs> layout is wrong. I didn't set it up, sorry. So I don't remember where the plus <laughs> key is. This one is minus, that's fine, minus. Still mathematics, okay, that's that should be zero. <laughs> let's see how fast that is. And that is, believe me, compared to anything we've seen before on this system, blazingly fast. <laughs> so, of course, that's not a good way to check the performances of anything. But you know what, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna give it a pass. We should also have a new um, camera application. However, I do see Cheers, which is the old 
GNOME uh, Chimera application. So this probably means that Thumb Thumb Thumbleweed chose to not uh, ship the new uh, Chimera application, either that or they just didn't have time to yet, uh, you know, port it. Again, wanted to use GNOME OS or everything is fine, but I just couldn't. But what I, I am going to do is test another big feature of GNOME 45, still with Cheese, which is the old, again, old uh, camera application. But in theory, if Cheese is actually able to connect to a webcam, which it shouldn't because I don't have any on this computer, but if it somehow manages to do that, I should be able to see a camera is being used indicator on the top side, um, top panel, which is nice. So rightfully they say uh, no device is found and they are kind of correct. I do have one webcam, that one obviously, um, but I guess that, you know, virtual emulation stuff, it's not letting the camera through, which is sad. I also don't see any indicator, but uh, I'm just gonna trust GNOME that there is actually one. It should appear near the quick settings, if I understood this correctly. Okay. Uh, this is a very nice, actually, um, privacy feature. Obviously, you actually see when your camera is recording you, especially because, yes, some cameras do have a little uh, LED to, that lights up to tell you, hey, I'm recording you. Not all of them do. As an example, yet again, this beautiful thing I have in front of me does not have any way to actually tell me I'm being recorded. So thank you for that, Gnome. Fun fact, uh, Kitty is very, <laughs> you know, it's trying to do the same thing. Like we saw, Kitty developers saw that Gnome was implementing this and we thought, okay, we, sh we really should have that. And now we are also rushing into implementing the same very thing. So yeah, the indicator does work. I trust that it does. Another feature is that you should be able to, yes, I'm reading now, obviously. I didn't study for this video, I'll admit it. Another thing is that I should be able to open and close quick settings uh, with a shortcut, which is a meta or super as they call it, S. Okay, so that isn't quick settings. What probably happened is that uh, the system registered the super key, but not the S1, I guess. So let's try to exit the overview, super S. And yet again, the overview opens and this time I actually held the super key, so it's not that. My this shortcut isn't working for me, but yet again, this is probably at this point Thumber. Um, I cannot pronounce things today. Uh, this system that is broken. <laughs> but yeah, the, the keyboard uh, shortcut is super S. There's also a light system theme for GNOME, not for applications, but for the shell itself. Now. Interestingly enough, and I do want to start a conversa conversation here, this new theme, which I'm now going to attempt, <laughs> I'm going to attempt enabling, this new system uh, is not exposed to the user anywhere. But the only way to actually enable it is to run a command from the terminal, which sounds crazy to me. Uh, especially because this new feature is actually announced in the official announcement. They literally say, hey, there is a new feature, you cannot use it. Or at least, if you want to use it, you do have to open terminal and change a setting that we do not expose anywhere in the interface. Now, uh, that means a couple of things either. Either this setting is meant for distributions, because of course distribution can change whatever, even if it's not exposed to the user, or this uh, is just meant for a very small amount, or actually better option, or 
they're gonna expose it some more later on because you never introduce a major feature like this and then never actually put any button to enable it. I, I don't believe them. So the command is gs settings set org dot gnome dot ah uh, <laughs> yes I forgot about that so um, dot key uh, the vorjak please work no now we are starting the very difficult task of changing the keyboard layout in this <laughs> virtual emulation machine so settings by the way this is also a great occasion to actually great occasion to actually check how uh, settings look because again settings is a super nice place where you can actually put a very nice sidebar and it should look beautiful when you do so i'm very curious settings here we are come on settings i can click it and now it should even open very slowly if I learned anything from the previous applications, but it should open nonetheless. <laughs> so this gives me a little bit of time in, to read actually the chat. So it is a testing feature. They want testers to try it. Okay, so that makes more sense compared to what I said. You're right. Could be a testing, but still falls into the second category of eventually they're going to expose it. We do see the new consistent uh, sidebar because they've thought of everything apparently. And it is sexy, <laughs> what can I say? Now, again, I do have one complaint, which I am going to attempt to show you, which is if you do not actually, s can I, oh, how can I resize this window? I want Ah, <laughs> this is going to be a very long video <laughs> if it go if it keeps going like this. Please make use of the workspaces. It's gonna take hours if I try. <laughs> no, I just want to resize this to be smaller, please. Okay. Now, if I make this smaller, I think my point will become apparent. Okay. It almost did. Now I just have to bring the mouse back to the sidebar. Too small for me, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry about this. Now, if I try to scroll. It oh, finally, I did it. Finally, after all of this, I can finally tell you what my complaint is. And it's none actually, because GNOME developers are very good and manage to just strike my complaint dead on the ground. So if you do not separate the header bar to uh, the content, when you actually start scrolling the content, then it will turn out that, you know, the, the, sco the content will be cut off, right? Because it goes underneath the header bar, but it looks like the header bar and the content is the same area. And this is why GNOME actually put this little shadow underneath the header bar when you start scrolling. I thought there was no shadow, but there is. So what can I say? Great job, GNOME. Now let's actually change <laughs> this keyboard layout because I'm not able to do anything, please keyboard okay keyboard <laughs> time for a collection to get Nico better harder to run a virtual machine the issue isn't the hardware here the issue is that gnome boxes doesn't work and I had to rely to a very last minute solution so yes I don't want English US so let's change it. You know, what can I say? Just G Gnome is good at design. Uh, unless I'm wrong, I think I'm right. I think they um, changed the, the, the white of the content. Uh, I thought it was a bit more grayish previously. 
I don't know if I like it because it was a nicer, I think, contrast between the cards, which you see now, and um, the view behind it. But um, yeah. The virtual machine again is slow because GNOME boxes don't work. That's what I rely on for almost everything. This is a last second solution that is not hard hardware accelerated in any way. So my computer is crying, really sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> stress test, I guess. So English, please. Uh, take a look at a new keyboard layout viewer. Sure, I can do that. I didn't know there was a new one, but you've told me, so I'm going to check. You will, however, have to wait <laughs> five, ten minutes <laughs> before I, I get to actually select something. Oh, hello, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay. Click English. And then I can go back to the console to show you the light theme of GNOME. Let's not forget what our, what our end goal is, okay? Could I see this window looks pretty small? Okay, Dvorak. Thank you. Okay. And we got there. No, too much. <laughs> okay. Now we just have to move the Vorjak up and give a look to the new thing. I am not gonna close the other windows because it won't really make a change. Have they added a shortcut for LinkedIn yet? No, they haven't. And I do think that this is probably my biggest complaint with GNOME 45. As you know, Microsoft has had this for years. I don't remember actually. This complex shortcut of Control Meta Alt Shift L to open LinkedIn. KD Plasma, obviously, when we discovered about this, we just immediately implemented it. Uh, there's a merge request about this. You can check it. Other developers of other uh, desktops actually. Uh, went to this merge request to say yes we are going to bring this to Budgie as well and I think even so other places implementing it I don't remember it now but not GNOME and that's just why not don't you have the manpower to just add one shortcut when it's obvious the benefit that you're going to yes I'm, I'm, I'm dragging this out very long just to make sure I get to view the keyboard layout viewer. <laughs> so they did add fractional scaling options, um, probably. They probably added some fractional scaling. <laughs> and uh, the thing is that, uh, first of all, I'm not going to, oh, well, that looks nice. Uh, it's very clean, I agree. Uh, this is my first good example of an application that is not using the new sidebar because it doesn't make sense. So you can see how it looks when everything is blended together and it looks great. So just what's the two? <laughs> Why is there one two? What, what happens if I click here? Does something happen? Hello? Uh, is it some modifier? Uh, okay, I, uh, it, I am slightly confused, but I'm sure somebody will explain, explain it in the comments. However, we can finally go to the terminal and start writing actually our command. Now, uh, this terminal, I don't remember whether it's the new one or the old one, because if you've watched my videos, GNOME recently, sort of recently, switched from one terminal to another and a lot of distributions did not like the new one. 
and they just decided to keep the old one. Now, I don't remember if OpenSUSE did this. I don't remember which console this one is. I could go into settings and check it out, but let's not do that. But we can see that uh, this application still has an other bar. Now, uh, probably it's just the old one, but if it's the new one, then it's not a good sign that some application preserve the old looking thing. So what, what was the comment? You distracted me. G setting. Oh, did I forget to, did I forget to click and apply somewhere? <laughs> what happened? Why isn't this working? Okay. Man, typing in the QWERTY layout is the worst, and I even made a typo. <laughs> uh, or GNOME desktop interface. I now have to type dash. I have no clue where the QWERTY keyboard <laughs> puts the dash. Oh, here it is. It worked. Okay, so first of all, instant apply. Uh, I use the word jack, that's why. Instant apply, great. Uh, no fade in, fade out, but yet again, I'm, I'm using what I'm using. I wouldn't get any kind of animations uh, regardless. So this is how GNOME Lite looks. So, uh, uh, does does it have any kind of transparency? The top bar, I mean. That's what I'm wondering, because uh, the floating dialogue is completely white. Great, looks clean and everything. They're gonna redesign it, by the way, but yes, for now, that's good enough. The top bar is very grayish. And I do wonder whether that's grayish or if that's greenish, <laughs> because I do see some green in it. So I'm gonna attempt to find out. I'm just gonna close the applications, which I don't use anymore, which is gonna take another 10 minutes of videos. I am maximizing. <laughs> okay. And then if I had a color picker, this would be much easier, but let me actually just go and check. I still think there it's greenish. Is it just me? It's not gray. Optical illusions are so easy to do. So I should have a color picker somewhere. And um, let me actually try to open up a color picker. I don't have a color picker. Just so it shows how unprepared I am. So I'm just gonna trust that is gray and my eyes are tricking me. In which case I'm gonna say that I think it's a bit too gray. I'm just gonna guess it's the same gray as the sidebar. That That's what would make sense, right? Sidebar gray, let's actually put, uh, it's, a, it's not the same color, is it? Yes, I agree that the look isn't great. Personally, I use the light theme in KD Plasma, so I am used to a light theme, but this particular light top panel, I'm not too sure about it. I should see it, uh, yes, completely a different color. I have no idea then what color, where, where was that color picked from? Thank you for the color X. Now check me. <laughs> Whoever uh, checked the color X and color picked it, please check if it's just gray 
or if it's tinted with some other color, please. The wallpaper is green. Uh, yes, I, I know that. Uh, I, that's why I'm wondering. <laughs> Meanwhile, let me <laughs> let me see also some other things. Gnome pointers uh, have a great new look for Gnome 45. I'm just gonna trust that. <laughs> There's new wallpapers. Uh, you can Google them because again, this is uh, a distribution using Gnome 45, so it doesn't have any new wallpapers. Sadly, uh, it seems like the image, review, image viewer and camera viewer are still the old ones, because let me give some context on this. One thing that they did with GNOME 45 was to replace the old image viewer um, eyes, uh, 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 GNOME eye, I think it was called, something with eye, open to the background, yeah. Uh, that was uh, replaced uh, with a new image viewer whose code name I don't remember, but it's just called image viewer in the UI. And then, and then uh, there's the camera application as I mentioned previously. So those applications, the new two new ones I've talked about before a lot, I've actually shown uh, the image viewer at least. And that is because we knew this was coming. Uh, it's very nice that GNOME didn't just wake up one morning and said, yeah, sure, sure let's change applications. But those two were actually eye of GNOME. Yes, thank And loop is the new one. And it's very nice that GNOME actually went ahead and uh, created a um, incubate, incubator uh, and apps within that incubator were actually being improved to be one day part of the GNOME core applications. And once that works, when you go from incubator to GNOME core application, you replace whatever was previously there and you actually get shipped with out of the box GNOME. This is kind of the idea to avoid what has happened previously with um, uh, the console, right? Something was shipped before it was ready and the distributions just didn't pick it up. So um, I think I covered mostly about everything I wanted to talk about. I did want to show much more than this, obviously, but I am fighting a lost battle here. Is there anything that I should be talking about? I mean, there's a lot that I should be talking about and I haven't, but <laughs> let's, let's pretend, right? Let's pretend that I'm a good YouTuber. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna thank everybody. I'm just gonna remind everybody very quickly that uh, every, everything is changing around here. You might notice it from different things. And uh, that also means as an example that not only do I contract an editor to edit all of the videos, but also, I do have uh, now people writing videos. Uh, so new videos are coming. I've already recorded two today. I was talking about fractional scaling. I'll get to that. Uh, I already recorded a couple of videos today. And all of this actually requires a lot of resources to keep running. Now, usually my videos are actually very prepared. All of them are scripted, researched. All of that takes time. Not this one, as you might have noticed. But if you could support me, that would be awesome. And the link should be something like this and uh, something like, was it com or org? I don't remember. I, I will, I'll, I'll check it up. <laughs> I'll check it up one second. But yes, if you could just drop in something, I also have people obviously for one time donation and I do have Libra pay, which is, you know, open source and everything. So that's better. But these two are the most popular ones. And the Ko-Fi link is correct. Let me also check the Patreon one, which is also correct. Two out of two, I'm great. If you want to subscribe, there's some extra content and uh, I'm doing a lot of changes. So I think you'll be interested. That said, let me just finish up what was uh, I was talking about with fractional scaling. I did an entire video about fractional scaling because the topic is just that complex. So on X11, we kind of had actual uh, fractional scaling. On Wayland, we have 
X Wayland applications, which is kind of X11 applications running inside of Wayland through some kind of uh, adapter, we could call it so. And those applications still preserve somewhat the actual fractional scaling. But then you actually have uh, applications that do not support fractional scaling at all, such as JTK applications, because JTK actually refused to implement the fractional scaling uh, standard in at least in Wayland, I don't recall if on X11 as well. Uh, so what currently GNOME does to achieve fractional scaling, especially in Wayland or only in Wayland, again, I don't remember, is to take a window, render it n times the size, depends on what exact uh, scaling you set to, and then downscale it to the actual size of the window, which is very power and memory intensive not great, but it does manage to, you know, actually scale stuff. I think it's also kind of blurry. And this also happens on Wayland for on Qt applications, same as JTK applications. However, recently support for fractional scaling in Qt applications in Wayland was added. That may take still a bit of time to roll everything off, but for Plasma 6.0 or 6. something, then yes we should get also fractional scaling, true fractional scaling there. So the word of fractional scaling is a bit complex. And my impression is that GNOME doesn't want to do actual fractional scaling. And uh, they just do the upsizing and then downsizing thing. It, but again, I've got a video about that, which is researched differently from this one. And I could do more in the future if the situation, situation changes. So. That's the everything. So thanks everybody. I think I'm just gonna stop it here because it was already embarrassing enough as it was. <laughs>